Uh, good morning, it's great to see you today. It's Wednesday the 5th of January 2022 and um, as you can see I'm somewhere different. Um, we are staying down for a few days at a friend's house. Again, just, just really wanting to pray for this year, beginning of this year, not pray for the year, <clears throat> pray for where God is leading us as people, as church leaders, uh, wisdom uh, and just uh, kind of sometimes getting away from it all is quite good from that point of view. And um, you can see over here, I don't know whether you can see, so I'm going to turn this around, but there is a, a beautiful view. Maybe you can't see that across the valley there. Bit of snow, bit of snow on the hills there. <clears throat> but there we go. So, continuing our devotion in the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, and on verse 8 today, and it says this. You love him, even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. So you love him, even though you've never seen him. Uh, Peter was someone, obviously he'd met Jesus, he, he, he lived with Jesus, he, he, he went around, he travelled around with Jesus pretty much for three years solid. He was, if you like, one of the so Jesus, he had obviously had the 12 disciples. He, we had a lot more people who traveled around with them as well. But he had the 12 disciples, the, that larger group of people. He had the three and he had the one. So Peter was one of the three people who um, really knew Jesus the best. Uh, he was the one who proclaimed that you are the Christ. You are the Messiah. And he said, you are, you are Peter upon this rock. I will you know, build my church. So um, <clears throat> the one, of course, was John, who was... Uh, who wrote Revelations and the Gospel of John. And he says, you love him, even though you've never seen him. And so for, for Peter, he said, like, you know, he was just like, I think, I guess, probably saying that this is, this is amazing and incredible. He said, you love him because we knew him. We saw him as he was. We, we heard his words, his words of authority, the things he said, and we loved him. <clears throat> but praise God that you love him, even though you haven't seen him. And, you know, for us, he says, he fir you know, we love him because he first loved us. He first loved us. Even though, even though we're sinners, even though <clears throat> we fail, even though we, we fall, <clears throat> even though he says at one point we were his enemies, we were far off. He first loved us. And so now we love him in response to that love. And that actually he, that, that rebirth, Jesus offers us that rebirth, that becoming a new creation that the old is gone, the new has come, the new has come, the old is gone, the old ways of thinking, the old ways of doing things, the old way, the earthly way, the natural way, the being, being if you like, it also talks about being in slavery and being in bondage to the things of this world. But in Christ Jesus, we are no longer slaves, we are children of God, we've been adopted into his family. So we first, <coughs> excuse me there, we love him because he first, Loved us. Though you do not see him, you trust him. And this is an amazing thing. We, you know, this is this is faith. Faith is that we're, we're believing and trusting in Jesus, even though we have never seen him. However, our faith is a reasonable faith because I know Jesus. I know God has answered my prayers. I have felt his presence. <clears throat> well, I've experienced his healing. I've experienced his touch upon my life. I've experienced answers to prayer, which only people's and, and people speaking words into my life, giving me prophetic words, bringing me words of knowledge. I know that God exists. I know that he loves me and I've, I have trust him. And I've, as I've trusted God, uh, I have seen um, miracles happen. Praise God for that. <clears throat> and if you trust God today, you will see miracles. We talked about this. We sang a song, Champion, on, on Monday night at the prayer meeting. Again, another powerful time. If, you can, if you're able to get to our prayer stroke revival meeting on a Monday night, it says, it says, miracles come out of your mouth. You know, when we trust him, because Jesus said this, he said, greater things than these will you do. Greater things than these. What can be more greater than raising somebody from the dead or opening blind eyes or, 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 or just seeing people heal from terrible, terrible diseases? Seen demons cut out. What, what greater things can those be? <clears throat> I don't know. I love the thing I was reading about Philip, about how Philip was one minute speaking to, you know, baptize the Ethiopian official, and next thing you know, he's like teleported to somewhere else. Um, 
I think that's one of those greater things. I would love to be able to do that. That would be, wouldn't that be so cool? And um, so it's a greater thing than these are for those who trust in the Lord. So let's be people who trust in God because God is still at work today. He's still on the throne. He's still alive. He's still able, more than able, to do all these things and willing for people who put their trust and faith in him. The God, the God of the Bible is still alive and well today and active in this world and wanting to use you and using to, you wanting to use me. Probably wanting to use us more than we want to be perhaps used by ourselves. So let's just get let's just trust God. Let's believe God that God will use us today and in the days and weeks in 2020 in this coming year. He said, and you rejoice. Here we go. That is it. That's that in verse six again. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. You rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Even though you go through suffering, even though you're going through times of testing, that you rejoice. The natural thing will be to say, oh no, you're going through time of testing. Just be miserable and just like wallow in self-pity. No, we should not do that. We should lift our heads up above the above the snake line. That's what Paul Fenwick says. Lift our heads above the snake line, above the above the circumstances. About even though the circumstances might not be good, lift our head above that and look to our Lord Jesus Christ and rejoice in Him. Why? Because He first loved us. He has saved us. He's He's written our our, our name in the Lamb's book of life. If today you're there and you're thinking, well, I'm not sure whether my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Do you know what? You can, be, you can be sure. You need to just invite the Lord Jesus to be your Lord and Saviour. To say, Lord, make him Lord, make him number one in your life. Invite him in, ask for forgiveness for your sins. And your life will be tra transformed and changed. Um, and you, you will trust him. Praise God. And you will be changed by him from one degree of glory to another. God is so good. Listen, hope you have a great day today. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you again tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.